Hi there, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Young again, and I'm going to be reading the next chapter of 11 by Tom Rogers. We had just finished reading chapter 31, where Mac and Alex were talking about um, their family members who possibly might be victims in the World Trade Center um, attacks. And at the very end of the chapter, they decided to dial their phones to try to get a hold of Alex's dad and Max's son, Bobby. And uh, we are going to now pick up with chapter 32 called The Man in the White Shirt. The time is 3.34 p.m. So this is right after Mac and Alex were talking. Here we go. Chapter 32, The Man in the White Shirt, 3.34 p.m. In a gutter in downtown Manhattan, half buried under a piece of sheet metal, a lost cell phone buzzed to life. But the man in the white shirt was no longer there to answer the call. And that was chapter 32. Now, if you remember when that took place, uh, I remember that took place when his he was trying to help somebody and uh, the cell phone fell and went into the gutter. Um, it shattered. And um, that was the last that his Phone, that he had seen his cell phone. So now we still don't know who the man in the white shirt is. We won't find that out till later on in the story. All right, chapter 33 is called Everything Changed. Here we go. Chapter 33, 3.35 p.m. No answer. Max slowly hung up the handset. Me either. Alex closed his phone. Neither one said anything for a minute. Why? It was Alex's turn to play the why game. Why what? Max replied. Why did they do it? Asked Alex. Mac chewed it, up, chewed it over a long time. I don't know. How come the World Trade Center? Mac shrugged. Big target. Do they hate us? Looks like. Why? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Nope. Things happen, Mac said. They don't always make sense. Mac glanced into the living room where Dottie was snuggled up with Nunu, the two of them chatting like old friends about a cartoon on TV. We've had our shares of tough times, Dottie and me, but she always had a phrase for a time like this. Soon as I'd start belly aching, she'd say, better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Alex thought about that. What's that supposed to mean? Damned if I know, Mac chuckled. There's always bad stuff and good stuff in the world. I guess it means keep searching for the good. What's so good about today? Mac thought a moment. You found radar. Alec pursed his lips. Okay, he thought. Maybe. Radar came running in as he heard his name. Mac reached down and scratched the dog's ears. Radar's tail thumped against the chair legs. Human beings have done evil things to each other for as long as they've been human beings. We always do kind things too. Rescue a great dog, keep an old man company. Alex thought about it some more and then shook his head. You don't want to keep me company? Uh, Mac asked. No, I mean, yes, but... But what? But everything's changed, said Alex. He pointed at the TV in the other room. That's what they said. After today, everything's changed. Mac considered this for a while, and then he stood up and motioned for Alex to follow. They stepped out in the front door and emerged into the shockingly bright sunshine. The air was warm, the sky cloudless and clear. Mac turned to Alex. What do you hear? Alex listened. Birds. What else? Cars. A dog. Sun still shining? Yeah. Is the sky still blue? Uh-huh. So tell me how everything's changed. Alex chewed on his lip. It all depends on how you look at things, Mac continued. When Dottie started to slip away, all I could see was what I was losing. Now I treasure every day with her. Mac lowered himself onto the porch steps. Sometimes when a terrible thing happens, it can make a beautiful thing seem even more precious. But doesn't it make you mad what happened to her? I suppose I could be mad, he paused. But what good would that do? Alex wanted to believe what Mac was saying. But what if, what if he's gone? 
Mac frowned. Don't talk like that. But what if? Didn't you hear a word I said? But I might never see him again. Mac exploded. That's enough. He looked away, red-faced. Alex jerked back, startled by Mac's outburst. I'm just scared he won't come home, Alex said quietly. Aren't you? Mac nodded, blinking hard. I can't lose Bobby, too, he whispered. Alex watched in surprise as tears began to roll down the old man's face. He'd never seen an adult cry. He didn't know what to do, so he just reached his hand out and patted Mac gently on the shoulder. It must have been okay because Mac put a hand over Alex's, and they sat there in silence for a very long time. Alex looked up and down the street. It was just like Mac said. Everything looked so normal. And then he noticed something new. He couldn't believe he hadn't spotted it yet. I know what's different, said Alex. There's no planes. Mac looked up at the empty sky. Do you like planes? He asked. Mac led him around back to the garage and swung open the door, flooding the room with light. Alex couldn't believe his eyes. The entire place was filled with model planes, biplanes and triplanes, jets and turboprops, swept wing fighters and bubble nose 747s. They lined the shelves and filled the corners and dangled from wires. Bobby always had a thing for planes. We used to build them together when he was a kid. We'd go up to the Palisades and fly them off the bluffs. Alex walked slowly through the garage, staring up at the planes overhead. Sikorsky flying boat. P-51 Mustang. That's a tiger's boss. Mac was impressed. You really know your planes. I love planes, Alex said simply. Mac laughed. Mrs. Mac hated them. When Bobby moved to the city, she told me to clear out the plane so she could park her car in here. I told her the only thing I'd be clearing out was her side of the bed. And then she called me a big fat loser, and I called her a tight-lipped bitty. That's when she threw the skillet at my head. Her? Alex glanced at the house with the frail little woman inside. She was a corker, Mac explained. Did it hurt? Only my feelings. Mac smiled at the memory. I ducked. The wall didn't make out so good. Does she still, um, still what? Remember me? Hate you. Mac laughed. She doesn't hate me. Never did. She's always loved me. And I loved her right back. But she called you a big fat loser. Listen to me, son. You can be mad at someone and still love them. Mac looked over to make sure Alex was listening. Even when you say things you don't mean. Alex thought of what he'd said to his dad. He hoped Mac was right. Mac reached out to the nearest plane and spun the propeller. Hey, want to fly one? Out on the street, Mac guided the little gas-powered plane through a series of complicated aerial maneuvers. He did barrel rolls and wing over wing spins and even flew the plane straight down the street above their heads, inverted, then landed smoothly and taxied the plane right back to where they stood. He held the controls out to Alex. Your turn. He grinned. Alex froze. He logged tons of hours on Screaming Eagles 4, but this was real. What if he messed up and wrecked Bobby's plane? Mac leaned over to him. Tower to Alex. Alex came to. A dog. A dog? No, it's my call sign. Mac nodded and put the remote control in Alex's hand. Tower to A dog. You're cleared for takeoff. Alex throttled forward. The plane bumped along the pavement. He pulled back on the yoke. The plane lifted its nose and rose into the air. He trimmed the flaps. The plane went into a nosedive. Mac never flinched. He reached over and flicked a lever to the right of the plane and then stayed next to Alex's side. Before long, Alex's flight sim training kicked in. The wobbly plane straightened out and he sent it circling overhead, soaring straight and true. When it came time to land, Mac stood back and let him have the controls. Alex justified his vote of confidence with a picture-perfect one-touch landing. He gave the plane just enough juice to cruise to a stop and turn a 180 right at Mac's feet. Nice flying, eh, dog? This is so much better than video, Alex grinned. He stretched his arms and looked around and was surprised to see how late it had gotten. The shadows were getting longer and the light was starting to fade in the east. He'd been so absorbed in flying that he'd even forgotten to be worried. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. For what? 
Alex shrugged. My pleasure, son. I better get going. Already? You're welcome to wait here. You don't take up much room. I promise I'd get Nunu home. Alex checked the time on his cell phone six hours ago. Mac sighed. I understand, he said quietly. Mac bent over to pick up the plane. Alex could tell he was disappointed. For a while, they'd been able to forget their troubles and just have fun, and neither of them wanted it to end just yet. As Mac stood up with the plane, Alex put a hand on his arm. One more? Mac broke into a broad smile. The model aircraft sped down the street for one last run. Then, with a dip of the flaps, the wheels left the ground, and Alex shaded his eyes and stared up at the sky as a little plane found the wind and began a slow, steady climb. And that's the end of chapter 33, and we will pick up with 34 tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this part of the book. We'll see what happens next. Bye-bye.